Hi boys and girls, nice to see you. Today's lesson is again about rocks, but a different type of rock than we had yesterday. Today's lesson is all about this special rock, the Ailsa Craig. Let's find out a bit more. So what actually is the Ailsa Craig? The Ailsa Craig is a tiny volcanic island, more specifically, a plug of dense granite left over from a long extinct volcano. It occupies a lonely spot 10 miles to the west of Girvan. It was once a haven for smugglers who stashed silk, spirits, tobacco and other contraband in the deep caves on the western fringes. But smugglers were not the only individuals to have their sights set on this strangely shaped bit of granite. Evidence suggests that the Romans had a presence, as did the Catholic Spaniards, who sought to invade Protestant Scotland. A three-storey castle was swiftly built in the 1400s to ward off their advances, the ruins of which can still be seen today. These days, it is uninhabited by humans, its sole remaining occupants being a colony of gannets and the noisy seals that patrol the shallows. So one of the really cool things about the Ailsa Craig is that it's got its very own lighthouse. Now I wanted to show you and teach you something about the lighthouse on the Craig. So we're going to have a look at what it looks like now and then we're going to find out what its special sequence of lights are. That is a special only for the Ailsa Craig lighthouse sequence. Let's find out what it is. The lighthouse on Ailsa Craig was made by engineers Thomas and David Stevenson. It was put on the Craig in 1886. Boys and girls, something really cool was that until wireless telephones were established on Ailsa Craig in 1935, the lighthouse keepers and employees of Ailsa Craig Granites used to depend on pigeons to convey messages from the shore to the island and from the island back to the shore. The pigeons were provided by the lighthouse boatmen at that time who received an annual payment of £4 when a doctor or supplies were required urgently in stormy weather when it was impossible to have messages taken by carrier pigeon. A system of signals by fire was used. One fire on the castle path showing the lighthouse to the north indicated bring a doctor for lighthouse. Two fires on the castle path meant bring doctor for the quarry company and one fire at the north of the castle flat showing the lighthouse to the south indicated that provisions were required. The lighthouse is 18 metres high and the light in the lighthouse has a range of 17 nautical miles. There are 37 steps to the top of the tower. So boys and girls, this is a close-up of the lighthouse of Ailsa Craig. And we're going to have a look now and see what its signal, what the lights look like from Girvan. The special light on the lighthouse flashes white once every four seconds, which is what I've shown you now with my special torch. So a couple of years ago, my sister Nicola and her boyfriend, Farmer Ben, went on a great adventure. And we went all the way across the sea to the Ailsa Craig from Girvan. I'm going to share with you some of the cool things that we saw while we were there. So we entered the boat and we set sail, waving bye-bye to Girvan and amazed by all the birds suddenly above our heads and in the water. Castles on the hills, the craig in front of us. It was a joy to spend time there. All the flora and fauna was quite special. Look at what it looked like. There were sea urchins, magical historical places. Eggs left from the seabirds on their nests. The nests looked very different from the ones we see on the mainland. Lots of birds had been enjoying the urchins as something to eat. Their eggs were very camouflaged amongst the gravel and stones. Little baby seabirds were beginning to be evident, hiding beneath the rocks and camouflaged well. 
There's a castle high up on the hill. More eggs. There was also lots of evidence of the history of the Craig. You see, the prize of Ailsa Craig's is perhaps its rocks, which were sought after for the crafting of curling stones. Nearly all of the stones used in the Winter Olympics and Paralympics for the last century has been carved from rocks plucked from this tiny special island that belongs to you in Girvan. The ancient volcanic eruption produced rocks with a tight molecular structure. Ailsa Craig Common Green Granite, the Ailsa Craig Blue Hone Granite and Ailsa Craig Red Hone Granite that are water and crack resistant and therefore perfect for sliding on ice and smacking into other stones. From the mid-19th to mid-20th centuries, the island was quarried for its rare type of this very micro granite, which was used to make these curling stones. Also, the floor of the chapel of the thistle in St Giles Cathedral, Edinburgh, is also made of this special rock taken from the Ailsa Craig. So one of the very special birds that we can see at the right time of year at the Ailsa Craig is of course the puffin. Let's find out a bit about the puffin now. So this is Harris, the puffin. He likes to spend some of his life on the Ailsa Craig behind us here and he's come inland to say hello to you and tell you a bit about him. Now the puffin is sometimes known as the sea parrot and I think that could be something to do with the colour of his beak. Puffins don't build nests of their own. They tend to use burrows that are already in the cliff tops. One of their favourite foods to eat is sand eels, and their beaks have this cool adaptation which allows them to do this really well. They fly down quite clumsily into the ocean, collect the sand eels, and they have these cool serrated spikes on their beak. That allows them to open their mouth, grab lots of sand eels, clasp them tightly, they press onto the spikes, allowing them to open and close their beak more than once. So they're returning to their little up, uh, cliff top burrow full to the gunnels of sand eels in their beaks. They can then gobble them up safely, stopping them having to go back and forward and back and forward every single time they've got one fish. Cool. When Farmer Ben and my sister Nicola and I went to the Ailsa Craig, we were really lucky to be able to see some puffins out there. So I'm going to show you now the photographs that Sister Nicola took of the puffins at the Ailsa Craig now. Say bye bye to the children, Harris. What wildlife could we find on the Ailsa Craig? Ailsa Craig is probably most famous for its massive colony of gannets. It's just amazing how many different types of seabird we can find here. But as well as the birds on the island, there's also been sightings of basking sharks, porpoises, minke whales, as well as numerous seals. Just a whole haven for wildlife. Amazing. So as we know, there are lots of food chains and food webs that we can explore of wildlife that could be found on the Craig. Let's have a look at that now. So boys and girls, as I said at the beach, at the Ailsa Craig and in every marine environment, you get what's called a food chain or a food web. Now what I've done behind me is create a simple food web showing a marine ecosystem and who eats who. So we're gonna have a closer look now and then we'll have a think about how we can take the information from a food web like this and transform it into a food chain. Let's have a look. So remember boys and girls, that the arrows in a food chain or food web basically means is eaten by. What's giving energy to what? So the seaweed, as you can see here, gives energy to or is eaten by the crab the crab is then eaten by the otter. Or the zooplankton is eaten by the limpets. The limpets are then eaten by the starfish. And the starfish is then eaten by the anglerfish. Can you look 
carefully at the food web I have created and try to find some food chains that you can draw yourself using the information. This cool thing is what's left over when the people take the curling stones and cut them out of the granite. This is used as a planter at Farmer William's farm. And I couldn't resist when I left the Ailsa Craig taking this tiny piece of it home with me. This is granite from the Ailsa Craig and one of my most prized possessions in the whole world. A lovely memory of a lovely trip. Bye bye boys and girls. See you again tomorrow.